Hello and welcome to episode 42 of Legacy Gaming with Atari Man 71. I'm playing through my entire collection of Atari 2600 cartridges. I have over 450 of them, uh, 375 to 400 of which are unique, so I will play all those games. I'm all the way through my Atari collection, and so now I'm going to do the uh, unique Sears games. So Sears put out three unique games. They were produced by Atari but only, only put out with, under the Sears label. The games are Steeplechase, Submarine Commander, and Stellar Track. And if you like videos like this and like you know retro gaming and, and retro console gaming, uh, please like, please subscribe, please follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, leave a comment in YouTube, participate in the chat. I will participate as much as I can. I mostly focus on the game while I'm playing, unfortunately. Um, but I do try to talk. Then uh, you can also reach out to me on Twitter if there's any questions you have, any things you'd like to see. I will definitely try to follow up. I, you know, I'm very active on Twitter. I put a lot of extra content on there. And uh, right now I'm focusing on Atari 2600. But after I'm done with the Atari stuff, I'm going to move on to probably my Odyssey 2. I just recently got that, and uh, I need to refurbish the controllers. I have a lot of time, though, to get that done. And then um, I also have an Intellivision and a ColecoVision. So I'll play through all of those. Then I have a Sega Genesis, and I have a Nintendo Entertainment System. And then beyond that, we'll see. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at probably a year down the road at this point, so we'll see how things go. Anyway, tonight, um, the first game on the list is Steeplechase. So my information on that is as follows. Steeplechase is cartridge number, the one I have is 49-75126. I do not believe it had the 6 prefix, so I think these these games all came in the 49 series. They weren't, weren't released in the 6 series. It was released in 1980, and it uses the paddle controllers. And this is a port of the arcade game from 1975 with the same name, so it's kind of an old game, so that's probably why Atari didn't release it under their own label. Um, the game uh, has four players. You can play up to four players because it uses the paddles, and you can beat against one another. The, um, the game uh, is a steeplechase type of race, so you have to jump over hurdles, and you have to jump over um, hedges, you know, because there are horse races that are like that. And uh, you have to get to the finish line first. Um, if you've watched any of my previous recordings, you'll know that I did not do well on the 110-meter hurdles in track and field, so I don't know hold out much hope for this. Um, unfortunately, I spent most of my time the last couple days trying to fix my audio problems. I... You know, I did a lot to my Atari 2600 Junior, and I actually modified it um, because with everything I did, there's a ribbon cable in there that uh, is just uh, surface paint on there that, that makes the contact. And I, I think ba basically, basically I rubbed that material off, and uh, so I wired in some micro switches that have a real positive click and then glued them in place. They're not the permanent fix. Um, but it was something I had on hand. I have some uh, other switches that are coming that I'll have to drill some holes. And then they're just a momentary switch that I'll put in there. Um, so it'll lose some of its original appeal, but the buttons are going to be better. The buttons are better now because it's a nice tactile click versus before it was just a membrane thing where you just push these two plastic surfaces together. There wasn't an audible click. There wasn't anything like that. And so... You'd push real hard, and sometimes it would work, and sometimes it wouldn't because these machines are old. Um, I don't know if I can find a replacement membrane, but if I can, the modification I've done so far, I can reverse. I, I kept all the pieces so I could revert back if I find a membrane. So anyway, um, I wasn't able to practice much, so I practiced this game a little bit. I was still having audio problems after all the work I did. I cleaned the contacts on my VCR. You know, I I was worried that the RCA connections were bad because it was my dad's VCR and he was a heavy smoker. 
scan, but it turns out that was not the problem. Um, I think it is the capture card because after I went through everything else, I you know unplugged the capture card. It's the USB side of the capture card, unfortunately. The HDMI throughput, you know, that runs just fine. So I know that the problem doesn't exist before the capture card. So I have a backup capture card, and I may change it if I can't get this one to work properly. It may be my USB 3.0 cable. Um, so we'll see. I'll change that out and see if it helps. You know, I'm starting the Activision games next week, so I'd like this to not be a problem while I'm playing those games. So VGR did not rate any of the Sears games. Um, I'm taking it that he didn't have them or didn't care to have them. You know, there, there are three unique games, so, um, you know, I've not played them that much. Uh, they are all very recent acquisitions for me um, within the last three months. And so uh, I will uh, put Steeplechase in. Here's, here's the cartridge here. So I'll put that in. Do some magic here on the back. Uh, turn that on. Oh, no. Okay, good. So you hear there's audio there. Ooh, and it sounds pretty loud. So I think it's going to be okay. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to blast myself out now that I've been doing all this volume adjustments and stuff like that. Um, so let's see if the paddle controller... Okay, it does not. So I'm going to just reset the game because I know I can use either paddle here. Okay, so I'm the blue horse. Or the purple horse. I'm that light blue one, but it's not jumping. Let me check the other paddle controller. Hmm. All right. So that was actually a little loud. Um, but let's see here. Zoom one. So, normally in the past, do, do I have them plugged in? I don't think I have them plugged in yet. Okay, I'm going to turn this off real quick. And I did not clean the contacts on this thing. But it probably wouldn't hurt to spritz them with some uh, contact cleaner. You know, inside the controllers. So, neither one of them seems to be... I thought before I was the red horse, but apparently... If you do one player... Okay, so now I am the red horse. Oh no. Now they're coming faster.
Ja. Because I'm so far ahead, it's at a disadvantage now. Because I don't see the, the stuff. The problem is... So, I finished first. I almost was at the right of the screen. Okay, so I see what it is. You got to get so far out in front of everybody. Um, but I did. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that again. This is actually not too bad of a game. So now I'm not controlling it again. What is going on? Hmm. This is unusual. So it appeared that I was controlling it last time because the slider went up and down. But it wasn't this previous time. Hmm. Yeah, that that's bizarre because I was the red horse. I'm going to switch them to the other side. Maybe it's I plugged it into the wrong side. I thought I was doing the red one last time, though. It seemed to respond every time I... Uh... Uh-oh. What I do now? Now I can't get my audio or video. Oh, no. Hmm. Did I unplug my capture card? was working. I had to go screw with the controllers. Tell you what, this is frustrating. I might have sent a spike through to the VCR and screwed up the VCR momentarily. All right, I will stop my stream. I apologize, and I will start again. Now I'm the red horse again. I'll prove that. I'll just jump here. See? I was so close. Same thing happened last time. I was close. Um, 
let me look at the instructions just myself real quick to see where which game had the it was the hardest. Uh game six. So that's the good horses and the uh random nope, I'm not controlling it again. I don't know what's going on. These these controllers are finicky. I apologize. You know, I was able to play a couple games, but game six. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, so I think I've figured out what's going on with Steeplechase. Um, apparently, to activate your horse, you reset the game and then you push the button. Um, is, the, is the game, um, from what I've figured out, the game thinks there's thinks there's a player plugged into number three. So there may be something actually wrong with my console, but because I only play one-player games all the time, I've never really experienced an issue with it. So I'm going to turn the game back on. And uh, I'll play another round of this uh, this first easy easy thing. Um, and you'll see what happens. So I'm going to reset the game. So I push the button and the red horse stands up. Now the blue horse stood up already. And I'm controlling the red horse now. Sped up. Boys hitting it. Ah, uh, got cocky. My timing's all off. I'm definitely out in front, though. I won again, but uh, <laughs> didn't I didn't quite do as well. I didn't quite make it all the way to the far end of the screen. So, like I said, game six is the hardest. So we'll and I I, I have to say I'll, I'll show the uh, the micro switches after this because I have to unplug everything. It's a nifty little mod. It actually makes you know a very positive sound when you push it, and uh, it's momentary and. It's almost as good as the original Atari Switches. If they had done something like this when they built this system, um, it may have been a little more popular. You know, those buttons were terrible. They were just like the joystick con connection, which is terrible. So I'm going to reset, stand up my red horse. Oh, it's so slow now.
jumping way early. Oh. Oh my god, they're killing me. Wow. Wow. Those are better. A minute. A minute they got to the end. I'm going to try that again. Stand up my horse. And you see they're already pulling out in front of me. They're not missing their jumps. And they're not jumping as high as I do on the smaller obstacles. Purple's out in front. There was nothing. There was nothing. So uh, that's interesting. Though they're pretty good. They're pretty good in those. In those. In those. Stronger games. So, anyway, um, that's steeplechase for you. And I said I was going to show you my mods. So I'm going to unplug everything here. While I get the paddles out of the way. Unplug the RCA. I'm going to pull the game out too. Now the RCA can play. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> It's all tangled up in here. Wow, I can't see straight in there. It's stuck, stuck, shoved in there pretty hard today. Oh, it's on my, my chair is on top of it. That's why I can't pull it up. The wheel. Okay, so here is the modification that I made. Um, I put two micro switches in there. You see them, they're the little red buttons. Uh, they're very small. I'm going to replace them eventually with larger like half inch buttons that'll I'll drill a hole and mount them in and, and that's kind of a permanent change so this I can always revert back to what it was um, but uh, I don't know um, maybe I'll do that maybe I won't so I'll plug these controllers you know they've been wound up in my case for a little while maybe I broke a lead on it or something like that I don't I don't know so the next game on my list is submarine commander this game actually looks interesting and this uses the joystick so I will plug my joystick in sorry gotta move my wheelchair If this game doesn't work, then I'm screwed. I screwed up my Atari. Like I said, I put a mod on it. I put these uh, these uh, switches on them, micro switches, to replace the uh, membrane buttons. And uh, okay. This appears to be working, so I'll go over my information. I think it might be my paddle controller. So the information I have for Submarine Commander, it is cartridge 49.75142. It was released in 1982. uses a joystick controller. This game is based on a mid midway arcade game called Seawolf 2 that was played with a periscope, and I remember seeing it in the arcade. But I never played it. You know, there's this periscope, and you'd go around in a circle, you know, like a fool. But uh, I never played it. The, the player controls the submarine going through enemy territory. The player must shoot targets in order to win the game. The player views the action, um, well, in this through the screen. And you can rotate through 360 degrees. And in the arcade game, it was a rarity to be able to do that. Um... And so there's a fuel gauge on here, so you need to, uh, it's basically, I think, a timer, but you basically need to sink all the ships. There are a few different types. I'll talk about those uh, when we get to the instructions, I think. Excuse me. 
So again, this game is not rated by VGR. Okay, and so I will just push. This is game one, so I'm just going to push the button to start it. Okay. I can't catch up to it. Hmm. And those PT boats are fast. That was lucky. I'm trying to let my engine cool off. That was lucky too. That was lucky. I was going to say that thing should have sunk. Almost out of fuel. Out of fuel, 770 points. So what was it? Game seven was the hardest. So I'll just push the button to start the game. Nope, can't. Ooh, wow, that charges.
I didn't know what's going on there. I'm out of gas. All right. Well, that's that's interesting. It's an interesting game. So the last game on my list is Stellar Track. So I will put that in. And I will read the information I have for this game. So Stellar Track is cartridge 49. 75159, it was released in 1980. It uses a joystick controller. And Stellar Track is a text-based game based on the mainframe computer game Star Trek. And the player is the commander of a warship and must destroy a, value, or a variable number of aliens before a variable number of... Star dates runs out. That's all the information I have on this. We didn't play this. I thought my cousin may have had it as a kid because it is because it is familiar, but we may have also had that for our first home computer. And I just it, it it's it's a text game, you know, it's got no business being in a video computer system, but nonetheless, Sears wanted to put it out, I guess. BGR did not rate this game, and I would give it a 1-1. One, one. Um, it's just terrible. I haven't played it. I just put it in and kind, kind of randomly did stuff, and it's really not fun. Text games are so outdated. They were, you know, back when the video game first came out. So... Uh, 11 star dates to destroy 10 alien starships in 11 star dates. Is that what it says? Yeah, let's push the button. Quadrant 1, 2 sector, so we're going to go long range command. So we want to go to 1-1. One, one. Warp course. Hold on. This is where things are going to get weird. How to warp. Using your joystick, display the warp command on the screen, then enter the course number in which direction you want to travel. This is done by moving the joystick right or left. There are eight possible directions to move. So according to this, your warp direction course number is seven. And where's the warp factor?
Uh, uh, the factor numbers are represent the quadrants you want to travel. Means we joystick right or left to change. Okay, so we want seven is our direction. And factor is one. Nash. Quadrant one, two. I don't think that's what I want. Short range scan. Okay, so here we are. So I want to go direction seven. I'm in sector four, six, and I want to be in three, six. And that might be an enemy. So. I'm going to warp four seven one short range scan In quadrant one, two, sector four, six, but I just tried to move. It said I couldn't. I, I don't know how to move here. Warp. So I'm going to have my course be three. All right, hold on. With the warp factor, represent the distance in quadrants and sectors you want to travel. Oh, so it's seven and then it's zero one is what I need, I believe. Okay. Gotcha. So seven, zero, seven. See if I can even move here. Warp. My course is one. One, two, three, four. One, zero. Turn I don't know what I'm doing here. I that's the thing. This game is I haven't destroyed anything yet, and maybe it's fun when you destroy something. 
Okay. Quadrant four four sector seven three. Oh, quadrant two two sector seven three. Yeah. Okay. I did move. Yeah, I'm gonna scroll back up. So this game, this game is a thumbs down, completely terrible. Let's go back here. Oh, so that's a star. So there's nothing in my quadrant. Aliens, okay, those are stars. I can't go to stars. So let's, Go back to the game. That's that's what I'm trying to destroy a star. Uh, galaxy map, and I'm in quadrant one two. So I want to go to quadrant one one. Warp. Core seven. Factor. One, that's why I've not been doing anything. One, and then we'll go to zero here. Quadrant one, two still. Warp. Of course, I'm going to go down to where the one is. See, there's 10 aliens in that 1-1, one, one, and that's where I want to go. 7. One. I'm still in one, two. Warp. Let me see my courses again. I apologize. Should just be able to pull the joystick in the direction and it puts the number up. Five is down. And I want to go down two. I can't friggin' move. Maybe because a star is in the way? Let's see. Warp. Was it course one? Oh. <sighs> One is straight up. Okay, one is four. You know, it's <laughs> they use the hours of the clock, but I don't know. I don't know. And then zero. I'll go. Hey, I moved. I moved. So now I'm gonna warp again. Course five, two, and then zero. Hey, that's something new. Quadrant one, four, sector four, seven. So, short range, so. Jesus, that's hard to see. Where am I? Okay, so up to. So let's see. 
Sector 4-4. Four, four. Photon. Course. One. Alien destroyed. Who's who's the man here? That's hard to see because I you know I'm playing on a stream that's really tiny. And the colors aren't aren't that clear. So galaxy map. So Uh, I'm in quadrant one four. Which is two dash lines now. Sector four seven. So I'm going to warp up one. Course one. One zero quadrant one three short range scan. So there's stars here, but nothing else. Even though it has a zero one, I have, I'm in one three. So I'm going to warp. Course one, one, zero. I can't do it because short range scan. I bet you there's a star in the way. There is a star in the way. So I'm going to warp for seven, zero, one. <laughs> well, I got to the end of the game. Uh, I don't think I did too good because uh, the galaxy must now surrender to the aliens. I must have run out of fuel running around um, and screwing around too much. But that's stellar track. Don't buy it. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it a night. Um, Steeplechase has just been the bane of my existence. Um, if you like videos like this and like retro gaming and legacy gaming, as I'm calling it, because these are the first systems that really spawned a whole industry, um, please like, please subscribe, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, or leave a comment. Um, do whatever, you know, whatever you can to get in touch with me if you want to. If you want to see anything, just, you know, please um, send me a message. You know, post a comment on YouTube. I check those. I, I upload my videos after I film them. So um, I'll be doing that later tonight. Um, and as always, be healthy, stay safe, wash your hands, social distance. I'll be back next Monday at the latest. I'm going to fix this audio problem, although it's worked for these games now since I've switched some stuff up, so I have a direction to go at least. And I appreciate you watching the show. Thank you, and have a pleasant evening.